we are finally here. We're talking about mass hysteria. Nerd soul. Late ill kid at one young so holding it down, bringing you that street geek and nerd soul. What is up, my people? Today, oh yeah, we are about to get into another wonderful episode of Talk Shop, and we're continuing our read along of Ghostbusters, and we're finally getting into mass hysteria. So I'm gonna do this in two parts. We're gonna do the first four issues now, the next four issues next week, and. I'm starting to understand why the people that read this comic book or this part in the series are saying that this should have been the third movie. It's the, the comic book is already amazing, but this storyline of mass hysteria brings back all the threads and weaves them into a new story that allows you to kind of open the, you know, open the door for all kinds of avenues. Um, so let's get started. When we come into this, Winston is getting married. You got, you know, our, our main four at his wedding. Uh, they're, you know, toasting up, happy because him and Tia are finally tying the knot. Everything seems great. You get Peter in rare form talking about the class and if it really was classy, they'd be in Vegas and just craziness. But back home in New York, we have our newer team like Kylie and Mel, even Ron and the Rookie, um, checking out this building whose 13th floor, and I don't know why it's always the 13th floor, but the 13th floor is, how should we say, disturbed. And the people there are having a few issues of the paranormal kind. So they come in, they take care of it, and everything seems to be okay. Right? Well, wrong. Because now we have a whole bunch of blood rain falling from the sky. And I'm not talking about the video game or the horrible movie. I'm talking about just regular rain that's blood drops instead of water drops. And that's where we flash real quick to Dana Barrett, you know, where she's having a conversation with her mom, talking about Oscar and everybody. You know, when you're reading this, you're like, oh, snap, Oscar, we forgot all about him, man. Oscar's doing good. He's chilling with his dad. And she's talking about co-parenting, uh, you know, all that good stuff and motherhood with her mom. And they're sort of, you know, how should we say, clashing over how to raise Oscar. But... The cool thing is that it sets this up to be a real situation. This is her life after the events of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. And she's back in a good old kitchen like uh, any other time. But Dana Barrett and kitchens just don't seem to mix. Because in the middle of her phone call, all of a sudden she gets introduced to some kind of pocket dimension maybe. Where Timot comes to her and kind of is interested to see why Gozer chose her. And I know that's kind of like a rhyme, but let's not take that too far. And through this dream sequence that Dana thinks that it is, she ends up getting cut pretty deeply. And I don't even think she got that checked with like some peroxide or something, but she is cut deep enough to bleed once she wakes up from her dream. And that's when she knows it's time to get the Ghostbusters involved. Now, she goes off. She calls Janine because he doesn't really want to deal with the guys. But the guys are back from the wedding while, you know, Winston is getting his honeymoon on. Um, and they're trying to figure out why blood is raining from the sky. You got cars floating. You got no real threats, but just weird paranormal activity and crazy PKE spikes from all of their materials and readings that they have going on between Egon and Ray. You got Kylie trying to read up on what's going on. They don't know what's what's you know happening in the, you know just this city. And they finally make a house call. Uh, but only with Mel and Kylie because she doesn't want the the main Ghostbusters to know because Dana and Peter didn't really end on the best of terms. So they come, they they kind of check out the house. They're getting strange, strange readings that aren't consistent on their machines. But Kylie herself says that the hair stood on the back, stood up on the back of her neck when she was inside of the apartment. And I don't know if it's the apartment or Dana, but something's definitely wrong. 
And speaking of wrong, after Mel and Kylie do their thing, um, Kylie actually extends the offer for Dana to stay at her uncle's hotel. And she's like, you know, here, you can stay here because, you know, it's, it's dangerous or whatever. You know, you need to be in a different place. And Dana has the nerve to be like, are you sure it's gotten that far? Look, okay, Dana, let me, let me. Dana and any woman out there named Dana right now, um, let me explain something to you. If ghosts come after you and they turn you into a dog, all right, and, and then, then you get saved from that. And then ghosts come after you again and then they take your kid and then you get away from that. And then you see a ghost again, it's that far. Like, I don't even understand what the conversation is about. Like, why are you still there? But the good thing is with all this craziness, at least Oscar is okay. But, you know, she decides to stay until a little later and, you know, pack up then. So, of course, when she stays and waits a little later, she's alone. And when she packs up, guess who she gets uh, revisited by? That's right, Ty Mott. And now she possesses her with one of her crazy birds. But before we go forward, the crazy birds, all that craziness is going on with ghosts and floating cars. Let me remind you, you can find me on Black Hollywood Live. That's right, the first online network for African Americans. Wanna check them out? Hit up blackhollywoodlive.com where they have celebrity interviews, after shows, sports talk, geek nerd tech, all that for your viewing and reading pleasure. And on YouTube, you can check them out at youtube.com slash blackhollywoodlive. So in this, we find out that Timon is pretty much trying to re- play the events that Gozer did against, of course, the Ghostbusters. So she brings Lois in. He's been having these weird dreams. He has to come back to New York. Of course, those weird dreams are coming from Timot. She gets him, possesses him, and it seems that her rules are now set to be able to engage the Ghostbusters to, I guess, compete with her brother or do better than her brother ever did. And we we leave off in a situation where um, Peter receives a call from Dana and she's like, it's me, please help. Peter drops everything, jumps on the motorcycle and he is gone, man. Because of course, you know, he loved that girl. But he flies out of there, nobody can stop him. He gets in and he tries to go in through the door, but he comes right back out. And it's because Time Out has created a I guess like a space-time continuum loop or something like that. And the rest of the Ghostbusters show up to help him out. And once again, we've got to climb some stairs. And during this trip up the steps, we find that the Ghostbusters come into contact with older ghosts that they've seen before that Timot is placing, you know, in front of them. Also that they meet a older version of themselves that give them a little bit of wisdom into what's going on. And it's, it's touching to see that at least they're all together when they're older, but it is kind of weird to see Egon and Ray interact with their older selves. But they finally get to the top and they finally get to meet, that's right, none other than Timot for the very first time. Now, of course, the whole new crew is there, as well as the whole original crew. And they decide that she is so strong that we need to cross the streams. And um, it's a very interesting outcome between them meeting her and crossing the streams. And I'm talking about beating people up, people getting choked, people getting hurt, and they feel like that's their last option. So. I'm going to leave it right there because I'm not going to spoil everything for you. You should be reading along. But I love this. It's great, especially for those that are already into the first two movies. It's it's It really wraps up the lore. It brings everybody back. You got, Lo, you know, you got Lewis. He's exactly like he is in the movie. You got Dana. She's exactly like it's it's a great match. So, guys, I hope you're following along and really enjoying this piece. Master Stereo Part 1 is on point. So, I'm going to go in and bounce and let's get down in the comments. Holla at me. I'm going to holla at you about what you thought about, of course, the first part of Mass Hysteria. So, for our bounce, don't forget to hit up thatnerdsoul.com. That's right. You can check out all the videos from the oldest, the newest, the latest, greatest, and all that. And then hit me up at shop.thatnerdsoul.com and pick 
yourself up a t-shirt player and don't forget to get one uh, for them playettes. Then come back here, like, comment, subscribe, and share that nerd soul. That's right. There's no better way that I can tell people that you like what you are watching. And of course, my shout outs go to LA What Up, VA What Up, RVA, you got my heart. And please, man, look, be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And if you are haunted in any way, it's time to leave. It's definitely time to leave. Just, just leave. Peace.